now we are going to take a trip to the village another space that has developed over the last few months via the ingenuity of creative people from this area but first we are going to speak to someone that has utilized the village space the stage space in the village her name is Amanda Fernandez and she is the head of Ferro Arts. People choose to live in uh, social housing, maybe rent from social housing rather than going to other areas because they want to live there and they want to live Ooh. in central London and it probably costs them less to live in a tower block in exactly. central They're London by... than go and rent a mansion on Holland Park mm. but you're still on the same postcode so it's like I don't, I just didn't get it. I went through a stage of disappointment. I still, I'm not even, I haven't, I don't even think I felt the anger yet. Mm. It was proper disappointment, but more from, it's almost like the council I expected, but we know this scum anyway. Mm. But then it was more the public, yeah. and even friends of mine are like, wow. Yeah, I just thought to myself, wow, this really is the world, the real world, because people, the true colours come out, right? People just go, get on and, I wouldn't say they're callous, but unfortunately not Order. enough people mm. care enough to actually make a, make, change. A, make a change. Yeah. And that's where, um, thankfully, as, as artists, creative people, fortunately, those are the type of people that care because they can actually make a difference and make a change and show people a change. I think it goes without saying that I was saying to someone the other day, whenever you're doing art, you don't just kind of say, I'm going to do a face or I feel like doing whatever. You kind of um, look at things and say, what's going on in society or something that's impacted you and then it goes back to right i'm going to put that out i'm going to do a print of this or i'm going to document this i'm going to take photographs of this or i'm going to make a film on this i'm going to write lyrics on how i'm feeling about this mm. um so when it comes to anything like this i think artists were the first people on the scene to be like wow you know this is this is legendary we have to be able and healing mm. healing I find that sometimes family don't even get you, but other creatives can get you. Yeah. Um, because you're not verbalising, you're not exhausted by talking all the time and having to write papers. And it's not, it doesn't involve paperwork. It's just a sense of, you know, we've got a canvas or you've got an idea and then you're just churning your energy out onto it um, to deliver a message. And then if the people who, if the audience understand the message fantastic if they don't at least you've got them thinking which is one step closer and it's all part of the experience and it's all part of the experience it's all part of the reason why you're putting out there people can interpret it in different ways but at least they're thinking you're getting them thinking out the box mm -hmm. you get you're generating conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. which which is my big thing not everyone's gonna have the same opinion <clears throat> sorry the not everyone's gonna have the same opinion but it's a case of you know well, if you are thinking in one way and this is what is actually happening, let's kind of challenge that. So, I don't know, through art you can always do that, it's not, it's not hard. So how have you seen the development of the different art groups, art projects that have manifested from the people of Grenfell? Um, it, to be honest, you kind of had these groups and friends before but mm. more so now is where we've all kind of come together with new ideas um, we all have the same experience everyone kind of watched it um, but come from a different discipline or different form um, and we've managed through whatsapp groups or facebook pages to unite mm. um, luckily in a sense that this happened in the summer holidays so mm. we were able to execute projects during that time especially with young people. Mm. So um, we did street art camp, which we were doing anyway. We do that every summer, but um, we did it for free for all of the seven to 14 year olds that were affected. Mm. Um, and that was ongoing throughout the summer. Then I know lots of people are doing art projects on down over at the Green, um, at Tabernacle, at Acklem, and it's 
not a competition. It's not because I know in other realms of helping or or kind of being part of the the recovery of Grenfell, people kind of competing like oh we want these people to come to ours. And mm. It's almost like we're actually collaborating. So yeah. Um, whereas we're doing, especially with funding, even because it's really hard to get funding, extremely hard, um, and a lot of small organisations like Fair Arts. I, s I funded a lot of things off my own freelance. So mm. to have people come with more experience in that and then you kind of share knowledge and I think if anything we've strengthened our unity and we've become a group in itself that relies on each other. And for example, we did the Takeover Festival last weekend, which is why I'm exhausted. Oh, right. um, but we, it was a sense of all of the artists that we were doing this project, that we were doing this festival already anyway, but I cancelled it because it was in June. Mm. Um, and the artists were like, oh no, you know, we're going to donate our artwork. We, you know, if there's any way that we can do it, we'll do, we'll help. Um, wow. So we kind of made the ticket, we took t tickets off, so it was free tickets. Mm. Um, and artists donated their sales towards that. Oh, so, fantastic. yeah, so that kind of natural and organicness of, of doing things only comes from creatives, I believe. Yeah. Just, it's kind of like, even with music, there's some sort of ego involved. But when it comes to visual art, it's almost like I'll do it in goodwill. Mm. It's almost like a gift, you know? It's like I can gift this to you. Um, that festival was amazing, really, really great. Uh, successful, we managed to raise £610. Oh, wow, fantastic. Uh, yeah, and then we have the remaining pieces that were donated are going to be going on public exhibition mm. um, at the local galleries and the local uh, kind of like art coffee shop for Bella Juice. Oh, okay, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so, and again, it's keeping these uh, small organisations, small companies together um, and it's supporting it's like each network, other. Isn't it? Super big network, yeah. Mm. Super big but tight at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so hopefully we'll sell some more over the next three months to support our project, which is Art for Grenfell, mm. um, which will be a, a calendar of events that we're going to kind of in take groups of up to 30 young people between 15 and 25 on. Um, and these are creative outlets. So what I noticed that lots of people are doing things for families and children, and I kind of looked at it and thought, well, what about the young people that are expected to just go on social media, express themselves and then go back to college in September. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, or um, the younger people who have a voice and have an opinion and are angered but have to go to work. Mm. Or they don't have children so they don't have the distraction of family life and they're just constantly putting this um, negative energy into their music or putting it into their artwork or putting it into their writing. Mm. Um, so now I thought, you know what, that needs to be rewarded as well. And that needs to be given some sort of al allowance for inspiration. Yeah. That need to get inspired. So um, kind of reach out. Right, yeah. As well. And expose them to new experiences as mm. well that are out of the area. So um, Emily, one of our artists that's come down from Nottingham for okay. the takeover, she did live painting and she developed similar projects up in Nottingham mm. um, so she was like Amanda how can I help and I was like I really any way that people can help would be offering something in a sense of um, projects or I don't know and it's just kind of like okay I'm going to organise a whole workshop day up in Nottingham invite you guys up um, and she's organising the whole thing oh wow so yeah so we're going to do that um, so your name is Emily Catherine Illustration oh wow um, and you are a live artist? Yes, I'm an illustrator, professional illustrator, but yeah, part of my job is that I do do live art. And you're from Nottingham? I'm from Nottingham, I'm from the Midlands, yes. Oh. Um, and I know that like it's been very difficult uh, with the Grenfell disaster because a lot of people all over the country have felt like they've really wanted to do something mm. about it. Yeah. Nottingham did have their own Justice for Grenfell uh, oh, okay. fundraiser. Fantastic. Yeah, um, uh, but it's nice to be able to actually meet the community, be part of the community mm. and just show our condolences really and our support. And since you've been here for the short period of time, what have you noticed, what st stood out about the people from Grenfell? 
the love, the equality, the passion, the creativity um, and the openness as well. People have been really vocal and open in how they feel about it and that's been really refreshing um, to be able to speak to people and get their true feelings on how they feel. But everybody's taken part, nobody's been shy, nobody's stood in the corner, everyone's asked, everybody's engaged, it's been really lovely. And how inspiring is it? So you? inspiring. <laughs> I can't explain how inspiring it is as a community that's gone through so much to be standing together in this way and not in a patronising way, not in a sycophantic way, in a really strong and proud way. It makes me feel incredibly proud of my country. With all these different art projects coming out um, of Grenfell, speaks people spreading their voice to the rest of the world. How do you think the message that we have in Grenfell will impact on the world, if it will? Mm. It's funny you say that because I have a friend in New York and another one in Madrid and another one in Cali in Colombia, and all three of them said to me, "Oh my God, it's so sad what you're doing." Da -da -da. Um, we're doing some murals based on Grenfell and I thought to myself, wow, that's actually tackled um, other communities and that other people anywhere else in the world are also thinking that could happen to us mm. because this whole social divide is, is not just in London, it's not yeah. just in North Kensington, it's across the world. So um, it's interesting that people have taken this experience or taken this tragedy as to say and adopted it in their own environment and kind of said, you know what, we need to wake up, we need mm. to unite, we need to be together and we need to make sure that things are being done the right way. Um, I think that always starts with some sort of type of revolution and it's always the creatives that do a revolution, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> so um, in that sense, it's a good thing where the world have woken up and they're kind of looking at things and saying, we're going to do this through performance, we're going to do this through music, we're going to do this through art exhibitions, um, through fashion. So it, the message is going on. And these will be things that this hasn't, I definitely don't think this is going to be over anytime soon. And I don't actually think it's ever going to be over. Mm. I think this is something that now we as a society have to evolve into. Yeah. And we have to adapt. <laughs>